A good example of using the push-pull tool uh, is when you would like to detail the surrounding and you would like to uh, either add a new objects to an existing slab or a building part or something like that or when you would like to completely model uh, something new. Now in this case I would like to use the 3D shape and the push-pull tool to create a bench uh, which will be a combination of concrete and wood and for that reason I will first start placing a block to create uh, one side of the bench and then the wooden part and then the other side of the bench. So uh, I will just go and use this create shape by block, this one, and then uh, I will define the size of the block. This uh, size of the block will be uh, something like 200 millimeters uh, by 450 and the height should be 400 millimeters or so and this will be the basic block that I'm starting to work with and when I hit OK and I place it on the drawing uh, all I need to do is just to uh, change it uh, I mean change its material to have something like a concrete or so and then I just uh, search for it here and I, I will find one that I have previously uh, tested and I think this will work fine with this one and I will just replace it on this object so this is what I start with and then now the good thing with the push ball is that whatever you draw uh, on a surface uh, whichever projection uh, whichever side of that object should be you can use it for the base operations of the push ball so what I will do I will just go and use the polyline tool for the sake of its flexibility and simplicity and then I just select the surface and then I start drafting that shape from the bottom edge of this uh, block that I previously de designed. So I click here and I try to find the edge someplace around here and then I will add an arc and I will try to find some uh, edge at the top and then I will just bend it nicely to have a smooth result, something like this. And then I click here and then I set up this vertical part which should be around something like 600, I'm um, sorry, 60 millimeters. That's where the wooden part will uh, connect to. And then I just uh, move the mouse uh, horizontally and try to snap it with this uh, other endpoint here. So this is where I ended up uh, with the other uh, point. And then I, again, I would like to place a curve here. So I will just move my mouse someplace around here and try to bend this part nicely, something similar to this. And then I will just find the bottom point and that's it, I actually created this shape. Now I will use this shape as a basis uh, for my operations. So I will just use the push pull and I will click on the surface and as you see you can actually use it for partial uh, push balls. you can just make a, a, a partial section like this to, to, to carve this into this concrete or you can just completely uh, make it longer and then this push pull will actually uh, drill it through so if I just undo this and then do it in one single step I can just uh, drill it through I can just chop this part off and then I will do the same thing with this one and I will do the same thing with this tiny part so if it's longer than the body then it will actually uh, chop it off like that. Now I'm satisfied with this result and uh, what I'm willing to do is to create another shape here which will be uh, based on this uh, 3D shape tool so I will just simply again go with the shape by block and then I will def de design something similar to the previous one so this should be the width should be around like six, uh, 680 millimeters uh, the depth should be it was I believe it was 450 millimeters and the height should be uh, 60 uh, millimeters and so this is what I wanted to create and before I go on I would like to also change the, uh, this wooden material to something else and then I go to the libraries here and I'm going to find something nice in the wood library here and I'll, let's just go with, uh, with the salt woods for example and try to find either this one let's just go and see whether this works I think this is nice uh, but you can go around and try to find another one so this is how you can uh, easily find uh, a new material and then create uh, one wooden block or several wooden blocks also if you would like to and then you can just place it uh, someplace on your drawing but now well actually I would like to align these two together so I will uh, what I do I just select this corner point and then I say I just would like to move this and I would like to snap it to the previously created object like that 
And so this is it. This is how you can uh, end up with uh, a half bench like this and then the rest uh, can be either model like this. Or I also show you something uh, because if you would like to uh, continuously re reuse this uh, thing, you can also save it as a part. Uh, that can be uh, reused either for uh, for this purpose here or, or for new benches. So what you can do in that case, uh, something that has been modeled like this, you can either keep it or you can save it into the libraries going into interior single object and create a new object. This will be uh, this one single uh, concrete, uh, concrete bench uh, part or something like that. And then it will go to my category into the bench parts category that I've cre created previously. And I hit OK. And so now I have an object uh, which is uh, reset to, to the zero now when it was created. But I just click on the bottom and I just snap it back to the ground, something like this. And then now I have this object. I just uh, either uh, make a copy and rotate it here or I can just go back to the 2D, uh, show it on the floor plan and then just use uh, a mirror or a mirror copy. Now in case of mirroring a copy I will keep this part and I will use a vertical uh, axis finding the half division points of this edge and drawing a vertical ang um, axis and then the software created the second half so now when I go back here now I can see this uh, nicely designed concrete and wooden uh, bench created from three different parts and now if I would like to I can still select those and I can save them as one single bench and I still have the option to use the parts that I have partially created with the push pull tool and with the combination of a single block so this is how easily you can use the push pull tool to create something like this let's see what you can do with the push pull tool if you apply it on a wall surface or actually any sort of similar uh, architectural part the push pull uh, allows you to find uh, edges and surfaces uh, on a wall surface, for example, and then either partially push it or uh, use it as a drill tool or make extensions to the surface. Now, what you have here is a very simple wall. It's uh, like uh, 300 millimeter wide or so, and then it ha it is just created with the simple wall tool. Now, the extra thing that I have did, actually, I used the line and the polyline tool to draw a pattern on it. And then I will use these contours to use the to demonstrate the push pull tool. So now, uh, let's the first thing that you can uh, do with that is that actually you can just uh, click on uh, this push pull tool uh, and highlight any of those areas that you have created, and then you can just decide the depth of that push pull. And if it's like, for example, 150 millimeters, which is the half uh, of the width of this wall, then it will be just like a, a, a partial. Um, cut off or, or, a, or a pushed uh, body part. And if you click on the top, for example, and you use it as a completely uh, longer uh, push like this, then it will actually chop that off, but still keeping the previous one uh, in place. And then uh, you can decide to, I don't know, make it make this one a little bit larger, like, I don't know, like 50 millimeter uh, coming to the front. And then I will apply the same push pull to the half division point here. And then I will just turn this and this and this into holes, like just uh, clicking here and drilling it through, clicking here, drilling it through, and clicking here and drilling it through. And then the very good thing with this one is that actually once you have something like this, this is part of the wall. So what I have now is kind of a parametric extension of this wall. So whenever I change for example, the height of this wall, because I would like to make it uh, a little bit smaller or, or higher or something like that. See, the, the, the complete thing was kept, only the top was chopped off because uh, I made the wall actually smaller than the original was. Uh, but if I make it a little bit higher, and then uh, because I modeled this part to be chopped off, uh, the rest will be uh, created again because it is above the contour that I have defined. So uh, it will be capped with the wall and if you, the same happens if you make the wall a little bit smaller, uh, shorter or longer. So let me just try to change this to 2800 or something like that. In that case, the rest of the model here will be chopped off. And I can do the same thing here. I mean, let's just make it to 2600 uh, from the left hand side. 
and then see now I, I still see those edges but those are the lines that I've created but the rest of the model was kept so this is parametrically stored with the wall which is a great advantage later you can just again use the push pull tool or go into the details and uh, change the settings of this uh, of this geometry that you have created and then if you remove those extra lines that you have added uh, then you will end up with a nice concrete sculpture or something like that and similar to this you can also create holes in walls or uh, niches or something like that so uh, similar to this what I've used here with this uh, exterior example you can use it also on interior wall surfaces or uh, building facades and elevations in this following example I would like to show you how to use the push-pull tool in case of a very typical architectural scenario and this in my case will be this building part with this uh, specific wall and I would like to turn this into a very typical uh, firewall which follows the top edge of the of the roof with an offset so being able to represent that I'm going to zoom into this part and I would like to first change the edges of this roof so I click on this one click on the roof and I use offset and I pull it back towards that edge around with around 0.8 meters and I would like to do the same thing with the other edge uh, just do the same thing 0.8 meters or so and then I would like to change the height of this wall and this will be uh, 5.6 meters and uh, that's it it's this is what I wanted to do with this wall now on this wall now I will have a very uh, good uh, solution to this uh, there are other solutions uh, just to uh, talk about those uh, but now I would like to show you how to make an edge offset with this roof and just kind of uh, simply uh, cut and push this part into um, into itself so it will uh, cut off the, the the top of this wall so uh, for uh, doing that I'm just using the polyline tool with this one I will select this wall surface and this is where actually I would like to create my polyline and then uh, I'm going to use the uh, bottom edge of this uh, roof first um, this will be the first point here uh, around this end point then I will use the top uh, edge which is around uh, here and then I will use the bottom edge which is around uh, over this spot here so now that I have this um, this um, this polyline, I can just hit escape because I finished drawing it. And to be able to see it much better, I will just right click on this roof shape and I uh, you will use uh, the hide this object tool to isolate it. And then now I can see this edge that I've created. And uh, my goal now is to make an offset with this. So uh, for that, uh, all I need to do is to select this uh, this polyline uh, which is in my selection list and when I click on this uh, edge I can use the offset all and uh, with this one I can uh, make a change of its uh, position either below of this line or above this line and I can use a value now in this case I will use a value of 0.3 meters uh, like that and then this will be the new position and then I will also uh, use the push pull tool now above this area uh, somewhere uh, around here and then I will just uh, uh, pull it back towards that direction and then uh, when it's long enough uh, then I just uh, click once and then it will make it disappear now to get back to the uh, original um, roof where uh, it is uh, still visible I will uh, end the isolation I just click on end object isolation so now the roof will reappear and then this uh, typical firewall uh, also appears as it should be and then I, if I want I can erase this uh, polyline uh, from the edges of this uh, wall so this is one solution a uh, very quick and intuitive solution of creating a firewall you can create specific decorative items on surfaces uh, using the existing edges or edges that you have created on surfaces uh, using a cross-section profile and following those edges that you have created previously now this is my so-called path that I would like to follow with this cross-section so I'm going to use the follow edge tool 
And for that, I, all I need to do is to uh, select this cross section profile like this one and then pick one of its uh, corner points That's, that will be the reference point. And from that point on, all I need to do is to click on the edges and, and when I need it, I can also uh, rotate this cross section uh, to the way that I would like to make it uh, visible in the 3D. I think this is correct. So this is what I wanted to create. And once I'm done with the either open or closed path and I hit enter and the software will create that decorative item based on the uh, 3D path and uh, also using the cross section that I have previously selected with its reference point. So this is how you can create something like that if you already have existing 3D edges. Now the, uh, the other tool, which is the push pull and follow polyline works a little bit different. At the first uh, input, uh, you also need to define one of the cross sections that you would like to follow. And then you can actually freely draw on uh, the surfaces of your 3D model. And you can also use this rotation tool to figure out whether this is okay or not. I think I still need to rotate it uh, yeah, like that. And then uh, all you need to do is just to pick up the path that you would like to follow. I think this will be somewhere here at near the top. This will be like a decorative item like this one. And then I refer to this corner point and then I close up uh, here and then I find the starting point. And once I'm done, I actually can finish this uh, decorative item. And now I have uh, similar to the previous one with a different cross-section profile but the point here is that this follow polyline tool allows you to freely pick up any 3d points on a surface or wherever in the 3d space as well uh, on the other hand the other one uh, the follow edge actually follows edges that are already existing in the 3d space so this is how you can use the follow edge tool and the follow polyline tool using cross-sections